A uh, welcome to everybody attending this webinar. Uh, today, 2nd April, is a World Autism Awareness Day. And uh, so today's webinar is on what are the new advances uh, in the treatment of autism and what are the benefits of various integrative therapies. So, uh, I'm Dr. Alok Sharma. I'm director of the Neurogen Brain and Spine Institute uh, in Navi, Mumbai, India. Uh, also professor and head of Department of Neurosurgery at the LTMG Medical College, uh, which is also in Mumbai. Uh, why are we all here? We are all here because, you know, we have children who are neurodiverse. Children who, what is medically called, are on the autism spectrum. We have gone from pillar to post and have been told one thing only, that there is no cure and that the only thing available to us is rehabilitation. And I'm here to tell you that that is no longer true. That today, a combination of cellular therapy Comprehensive rehabilitation as well as integrative therapies can reverse autism in a significant number of children, especially if it is done earlier. So the old belief that there is no cure for autism and that it cannot be reversed is not true anymore. And I'm personally talking with an experience of having treated over 3,500 children from across the world. So I'm going to share with you our data on what can be done for our neurodiverse kids who are on the spectrum. So on the left-hand side, you see a picture of a fracture of the leg. You can see the bone is broken here. You can see the bone is broken here. And I ask you, if we were to have a fracture of the leg like this, would we do physiotherapy or rehabilitation on this broken leg? Would we? Obviously not. What would we do? We would go to an orthopedic surgeon who would fix the fracture using plates, screws, etc., put a plaster. And once the bone is joined, put together, now we will do rehabilitation. Unfortunately, this is what we are doing right now. Here is a PET CT scan, a brain scan of a child on the autism spectrum. What is blue here is hypometabolic brain. That's brain that is functioning less than normal. That's brain that could be potentially damaged. That's brain that is inactive. All the problems of our children are because of this. And what we are doing is that we are giving rehabilitation on a damaged brain. Now, how are we going to get results? We all have faced the frustration that we have done speech therapy, we have done occupational therapy and behavioral therapy, and despite all our therapies, we are still not able to get improvements because we are doing it on a damaged brain. Now what if we could repair the brain? Here you can see a brain that's repaired after stem cell therapy, and you can see the green uh, functioning, which is back. You can see here hypermetabolism. You can see the green functioning. Wouldn't we get better results? if we did rehabilitation on a repaired brain. And I'm here to tell you that this repair is now possible in a very simple and a safe manner. So there was an old thinking that once the nervous system, the central nervous system is damaged, you cannot repair it or regenerate it. But today's new thinking is that some amount of regeneration is possible by replacing cells and by repairing them through cellular replacement and repair. So we look a little bit at stem cell therapy. So what exactly are stem cells? Stem cells have actually got us from a state of hopelessness to one of hope. And the word stem comes from the stem of a tree. And just like a stem of a tree gives rise to branches, leaves, fruits, flowers, etc. There are some cells which can give rise to any other cells of the body. And these cells are called stem cells. How do these work? So the first ability of stem cells is that they are able to multiply. 
So this is a very special ability that if you have a few cells, you can, they multiply and you can make them into larger numbers. Second, and this is the most important quality, is that if you have a stem cell, you can make it into a brain cell or a heart cell or a muscle cell or a, a blood cell or whatever you want. So the same stem cell can become whatever tissue you want, depending on where you place it. So this is the amazing property of stem cells. You can make the same stem cell into brain or muscle. If you put it in the brain, it becomes a brain cell. If you put it in the muscle, it becomes a muscle cell. So they multiply and they convert into other cell types. And this is a picture from our own research. This is not from Google. This is uh, what a stem cell looks like. And when we created the environment of the brain outside in the laboratory, uh, we showed that uh, you know uh, these cells could convert into this. You can see these, these are brain cells. So all of these were stem cells first. And now not only have they converted to brain cells, but they are connecting to, and they're connecting to each other. They're actually making connections. So we have laboratory and experimental proof that the stem cells we use uh, from the bone marrow, and I'll talk about it in more detail, do convert into brain cells. Uh, the other property of stem cells is that they uh, release certain positive growth factors in the body. These are called, uh, some of them are called nerve growth factors, cytokines, etc. And these positive chemicals have a very strong healing effect on the damaged brain. They also increase the blood supply, and this is called angiogenesis. So whatever blood supply is there, when the stem cells go and implant themselves, uh, sorry, there's some. I apologize, uh, something has gone wrong with the. Yeah, uh, so they improve the blood supply and, and when there is more blood coming to the damaged part, there is better healing. So uh, stem cells may be of two types. You can get stem cells from the child or the patient itself and uh, put it back in the patient or you could take it from outside. So when it is taken from the patient, put back in the patient, it is called autologous. When it is taken from somebody else, it is called allogenic. Uh, there are different types of stem cells. You can get stem cells from the embryo. This is from spare IVF um, embryos or, you know, from uh, this is like from aborted material. So this is, these are called embryonic stem cells. Um, so life starts when the sperm and the egg come together, uh, you know, and it, it forms a fertilized egg. And this then converts into uh, what is called a blastocyst, which is a bundle of embryonic stem cells. So all of us, all of us hearing this webinar, on our fifth day of life in our mother's womb, we were a bundle of stem cells. And from these stem cells, the whole body was made, which means these stem cells have the potential to become any part of the body because the whole body was made from this grape-like bundle. Uh, however, embryonic stem cells are controversial. They have ethical issues. They have certain medical problems and complications. So we do not use embryonic stem cells. I repeat, we do not use embryonic stem cells. You can also get stem cells from the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is the cord that connects the mother and baby at birth. And uh, nowadays, very earlier, this was just thrown away in the garbage. Nowadays, they collect it. And if uh, the umbilical cord has been saved, we could use stem cells from there. And uh, you know they could be given to the baby. Uh, but what we prefer to use is what is called autologous adult stem cells. They're called adult, but they're then children as well. Uh, so in a bone, in the center of a bone, there is a liquid called bone marrow. And this bone marrow uh, contains billions of stem cells. So if you put a needle into the bone, we can actually take out uh, bone marrow and get billions of stem cells. So this is what we prefer, taking from the bone and putting it back. And the last type was something called induced pluripotent stem cells. This is a combination where the outside is adult, inside is embryonic, but this is a research phase only. And <coughs> uh, we cannot use this clinically at present. So we work with adult stem cells because they are safe. They don't form tumors. There's no rejection. They, you can easily get them through a single needle prick. You don't need any surgery. And there are no ethical issues about the use of these stem cells. Uh, now, how do you put the stem cells back? So our preferred method is intrathecal. We put a needle into the lower lumbar spine and we inject it into the spinal fluid. The spinal fluid takes it to the brain. 
This is called intrathecal, but it could also be injected intravenous, intraarterial. Uh, you can give it through the nose. You can directly implant it into the brain. So there are different ways of giving stem cells. So basically, stem cell therapy, we are using healthy cells to replace damaged cells. So here you can see the damage in a in a in the brain of a child with autism. You give stem cells, and the damage goes away. So what's the scientific base for this therapy? So the, uh, we all are aware that the highest recognition in science and medicine is what is called the Nobel Prize. And uh, three times in 15 years, 1990, 2007, and 2012, the Nobel Prize has been given to stem cell research. So um, there, is, there is no other field of medicine which has got in such a short time the Nobel Prize three times. So that is evidence of the scientific base of this treatment. <clears throat> What's the scientific base of the work that we do at Neurogen? Well, all our work is published in peer-reviewed journals. Uh, so we have uh, over 100 scientific papers, 16 on autism, 15 on cerebral palsy, etc. So everything that we do, all our results are in the public domain in peer-reviewed journals. Why is this important? This is important because if your work is published in a peer-reviewed journal, it means somebody outside of you, a third party, the editor of the journal, the editorial board, and three independent reviewers have analyzed your data and found it authentic, suitable, uh, suitable enough, having a scientific and ethical base to publish it. Journals are very particular about what they publish. So when your work is published, somebody outside of you has validated your data. That is why uh, publications are important. <laughs> now we have medical textbooks. <laughs> so this is a medical textbook called Recent Advances in Autism. And they have, uh, you know, this is from the SMG group, and they have introduced in a, this is the book's name, Recent Advances in Autism. In that book, they have introduced a chapter, Stem Cell Therapy in Autism Spectrum Disorders. And they asked us to write this chapter. So we have written this chapter on Recent Advances. Then, uh, you know, another book on cerebral palsy. Again, there's a chapter, Stem Cell Therapy for Cerebral Palsy, which we have written the chapter. Likewise, a book on physical disabilities. We have written the chapter on stem cell therapy in pediatric neurological disabilities. In muscular dystrophy, we have written the chapter on stem cell therapy in muscular dystrophy. So uh, medical textbooks have now introduced stem cells as a chapter. And most of the time when they introduce it as a chapter, uh, they ask us to write because we have the world's largest experience. Uh, the government of India at the highest level is very supportive of stem cells. Our Prime Minister, Honorable Sri Narendra Modi, when he went to Japan, he actually visited Professor Yamanaka. He went to his laboratory in Kyoto and personally met with him. That highlights how, uh, you know, how important he felt this was. Normally, Prime Ministers and Presidents don't go to research laboratories, but our Prime Minister did. Uh, in India also, whenever he gets a chance, he visits uh, stem cell facilities. Uh, I am very honored that uh, in a book that I've written, uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has written an introduction. There's an introduction forward written by Sri Narendra Modi in one of my books, and this is uh, myself presenting the Honorable Prime Minister with a copy of the book uh, where he's written an introduction. And this is the introduction. You can see that's my name, and that's uh, Sri Narendra Modi it's in the local language. And uh, just to show you, uh, you know, how he feels about stem cells, there is a small video of him making a very powerful speech in the Indian parliament about stem cells. I Japan. So Japan, I have one work in my work. I have a Nobel laureate scientist who has got me there. I have done it. So they have done the research in stem cells. मैंने जितना पढ़ा था तो मेरे मन में आया था शायद इनकी एक खोज हमारे काम आ सकती है हम गए तो वहां गए उनसे चर्चा की और बेंगलोर के हमारे साइंस इंस्टीट्यूट के साथ आज उस दिशा में हमारा काम हो रहा है कि स्टेम सेंस के द्वारा हमारे युवा साइंटिस्ट कुछ खोज करें सो दैट इज आवर ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टेम सेल्स इन द इंडियन पार्लियामेंट so now that was just to give you a little background about you know what are stem cells how they work you know uh, uh, opinions of different people etc now let's look and see how this treatment is actually done so that's the beauty of the treatment that this is not a surgical operation it's a procedure 
in which there are only two needle pricks. Only two needle pricks. What we do is we take a needle and this is the pelvic bone. This is the bone above the hip bone. This is the hip bone, above that is the pelvic bone. And we put a needle, this is a OT picture, we'll see a small video of this. And then we aspirate the bone marrow out from the pelvic bone. Then when we, we take this to the laboratory, where we sort of run it through machines called centrifuges, which layers the content of the bone marrow. The heavy things settle below and the lighter things above and the stem cells are in the center. Then we take out these stem cells, isolate them and purify them. And with a very thin needle, this is called lumbar puncture, we inject it into the lower lumbar spine so that it goes straight to the brain. So in this whole treatment, there's two needle pricks. With one, we are withdrawing and with one, we are injecting. And what are we injecting? Cells from the child itself. Okay, There is nothing from the outside. So here's a short video of that. Now I'll run you through the video again. See, this is the bone marrow aspiration. You can see the bone marrow is coming out. The child is sleeping. We take it to the laboratory where we run it through some machines. And here are the stem cells with a very thin needle we are injecting into the lower spinal fluid. So only two injections, one to aspirate and one to put back. So just again, uh, bone marrow aspiration, stem cell separation and injection again. So now let's look at what exactly autism is. Um, we know it's a neurodevelopmental disorder, although now the new thinking is that it is not to be referred to as a disorder or a disease. And um, increasingly, we are calling people on the autism spectrum as neurodiverse uh, as compared to neurotypical people. So, uh, however, medically, it is still looked upon as a neurodevelopmental disorder. It was first described in 1943 by Dr. Neymar. We normally diagnose it, uh, you know, the symptoms in the first three years of life and is now being classified as a spectrum disorder, which could be mild, moderate or severe. Uh, boys are affected four times more than girls. Now, what is surprising is that the uh, incidence of autism is increasing and increasing unprecedentedly. Uh, in 2004, one out of 166 children had autism. And in 2020, it became one in 54. And the most recent figures from CDC make it one in 44. So, you know, from one in 166 to one in 44, there is a dramatic increase in the incidence of autism, which means there are today 70 million people on the spectrum, which is 1% of the world's population. Yes, you heard me correct. 1% of the world's population today has autism. That's a large and a huge number of people who are suffering and society, politicians, regulators, public opinion makers have not given it the attention it deserves. That so many people are suffering uh, because of a neurodevelopmental situation. Uh, the symptoms are divided broadly into three. There can be problem of social communication. There is problem of uh, social interaction. There is pro There are problems with communication, speech, being able to uh, express what they want. And they are repetitive behavior. So, poor social interaction, impaired communication, and repetitive behavior. This is the triad of symptoms. And in different children, it occurs in different uh, percentages and combinations. What is new? Why are we having this webinar? What is new is that for the first time ever, we have a better understanding of autism. Up to now, we were not even sure all these years which parts of the brain are affected because we did MRI scans and they appeared normal. So here it was, here we had a child who could not speak, a child who had, you know, could not socially interact, a child who had repetitive behavior, sometimes harmful. And we were going about saying that the brain is normal, but today using modern imaging technology, such as PET CT scan, uh, uh, we are actually finding the parts of the brain which are not functioning. I'm gonna talk about that later. So apart from a better understanding, we have now a treatment available. There was no drug for, for autism. There was no surgery for autism. But today we have cellular therapy in the form of stem cells, 
which can fix the damage. So uh, this is our original research. Uh, this is a side cut of a uh, CT scan of the brain where whatever is blue is damaged. So these are the mesial temporal areas, the speech, attention, concentration areas, etc. And this is the small brain called the cerebellum. So we have seen in more than 3,500 children that they have this kind of damage uh, in the brain. As part of a research project, we did a PET scan in normal children and not a single normal child had this damage. So now we know that all the symptoms in our children occur because there is a part of the brain that's functioning suboptimally. So we know the reason why our child is, is you know, hyperactive and aggressive. We know the reason why our child can't talk. And this is an important insight. And this work is published in the World Journal of Nuclear Medicine. This is a very prestigious journal where our article is published. Uh, what are the baseline age-related uh, development of metabolic changes uh, as me measure of it? So we actually studied over the years what happens. Uh, now, uh, so, so that's the first point I said, that we have a better understanding which parts of the brain are affected, how much they are affected, and you know, can something be done about it? Now, another point I want to make is people think that a treatment like stem cell therapy is a be all and uh, you know, you do it and uh, you know, the child will be cured and nothing more to be done. No, that's not true. What works is a comprehensive treatment plan. We need all the rehabilitation from speech to occupational to, uh, you know, aquatic therapy and all of that. We need diet advice. You know, we need uh, sometimes chelation in the heavy metals. We need biomedical uh, hyperbaric oxygen is very good. And when you combine all this with stem cell therapy, now you have a possibility of reversing autism. So let's, uh, all of you are familiar with neuro rehab. So I'm going to run through these slides. Uh, we offer applied behavioral analysis, uh, which is, which you all are aware, the, 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 the role of ABA is that it believes that every behavior has an antecedent effect and a consequence. Now, you, if you can't modulate the behavior, you can modulate the event before or the consequence, and then you can change behavior. Uh, that's like an ABA session going on. Uh, then there is occupational therapy. Now, occupational therapy consists of many different kinds of things, from vocational rehab to recreational activity, uh, school-based intervention, social skills, etc., activities of daily living. So uh, OT consists of a lot of things, and they are very important. There's nothing more important in autism than a proper structured occupational therapy program. Makes a huge difference. Uh, and that is our occupational therapy room. That's the SI room. So uh, SI therapy is a form of occupational therapy, but slightly different. And uh, basically it works on, uh, you know, uh, organizing sensory information so that we get a better adaptive response. And that's our SI room uh, at our hospital. You can see the flooring is different. The stuff on the walls is different. And, you know, everything is made differently. So uh, speech therapy has a very important role to play as well. Now, there was an older thinking that only, you know, sp speech, verbal speech is important. The new thinking is communication is important. Now, verbal speech is an important part of communication, but the child should be able to communicate. So there's a slight shift uh, in how speech therapy is offered nowadays. Um, so that's psychology and uh, there's physiotherapy. So uh, now this is a point to note. Very often, children with autism don't go to, go to a physiotherapist. But what we have found is that they have problems such as motor coordination, clumsiness in limb, tone, a gait, postural instability, etc. So uh, what we uh, need is a structured physiotherapy program as well, which presently most other people don't offer. So that's a physiotherapy going on. Now, we have found aquatic therapy to be tremendously beneficial. You know, it improves the posture, coordination, it, has, it sorts sensory issues out, social skills, Cognitive skills, it improves attention, concentration. Most important, it improves the sleep pattern. Uh, most parents tell us that after aquatic therapy, their sleep pattern completely changed. Uh, the hyperactivity is less and it reduces the stimulatory behavior. So, this is how uh, aquatic therapy is done. It's we have a separate water tank, uh, you know, which is just for, we have one for children, one for adults. And 
using this, we do therapy in the pool. So aquatic therapy is not swimming. Aquatic therapy is therapy in the pool. So you need qualified skilled people to do it. Then there are different art-based art therapies. This include music therapy and uh, uh, you know vitamin B complex, uh, vitamin C, omega three, DMG, prebiotics, and others. So all these are very important. Now diet and nutrition. So autism is one condition where diet has this amongst everything as the single most important role to play. So there are some foods which you must promote like probiotics, prebiotics, ketogenic diet, gluten-free, casein-free, etc. Uh, camel milk is wonderful. Vitamin-rich food is very good. Curcumin is very good. So these are foods to promote. There's something that definitely to be avoided, like sugar, additives, pesticides, uh, genetically modified organisms, inorganic processed foods. So there are foods to be eaten and there are foods that should not be eaten. Uh, a ketogenic diet is one which is high in fat, has just enough proteins and is low in carbohydrate. But despite all this, are we doing enough? No, we are not doing enough because we have not repaired the fundamental problem in the brain. Yes, child will have some improvements, but we're not doing enough. So this is our result with uh, stem cells. This is, uh, although we have now treated more than 3,500 patients, this is our data from a year ago uh, of 700 patients. And as you can see, 33% became completely normal. That means they had a significant improvement. 29.53 had a moderate improvement. And 25 mild, and about 11% of the people did not improve. So uh, what we notice is that uh, there is an age correlation. So all these 33 who improved significantly, uh, they were all below five years. Uh, then between five and 10 years, was here between 10 and 20 and all these children here they had not improved they were all over 20 so now we know that early intervention helps the earlier we treat the patient the more likely they are going to be in this group the later we treat the patient the more likely they will be in the lower down group so I repeat again I know you may be fed up with my repetition, early intervention, early intervention. So on what basis can we make a claim that stem cell therapy works for autism? One is there should be a statistical significance of results. And second, we must have objective proof that brain imaging is improving. So here you can see these are various calls. This is called, this is from a published paper. There's a CGI score. The average was 4.5 before and later it became three. Uh, the ISA scale also from 115.5 to 97. So these, when you do put them through formula, are statistically significant. So uh, this is the data from our own paper. And uh, this is information from outside. And um, that is, what is the change before and after in various symptoms? So social relationships from 13... 35.6 before to 13. Emotional response from 23 to 20. Now, all these are statistically significant. <coughs> so, as you can see, <coughs> cognition, sensation, behavior, speech, emotional, social, all these things improve significantly. Now, here is the objective evidence of improvement. So, you can see, uh, you know, the blue above here. Uh, this is the damage. So this is one child. You are seeing different sections. This is before stem cells, the blue part. That's damaged. It's hypometabolic. And below is the same child scans six months after stem cells. And you can see that this damage has gone. You can see that this damage has gone. You can see that this damage has gone. So this, my friends, is objective proof that the damage in the brains of children with autism can be and should be repaired. I'm showing you two or three, but I have 3,500 scans like this before and after. All of them showing good improvement. Here again, you can see the damage before, you know, and you can see afterwards, it's all completely gone. Here you can see the damage before and you can see afterwards how it is gone. And some people question, you know, because we do scans at six months. They said, how do you know after two, three years, it doesn't come back? So in a few patients who gave consent, we did it year after year, 12 to 13 to 14. 
and you can see this blue it has become less it becomes still less so not only is the improvement but the improvement is sustained over the years so the world's first scientific publication on stem cells and autism is written by us uh, it is uh, in a journal stem cell uh, uh, stem cells international the second paper came from china the third from italy and the fourth and fifth paper have come from the united states so we have the world's first scientific paper after that we have a total of 16 scientific papers in autism and uh, here just we run you through some videos uh, of children who improved uh, there are ch five children from five different continents uh, we'll just see videos of two or three and uh, this is to show you in real life what a different stem cells makes so here we go this is a child from america kentucky united states who underwent stem cell therapy i couldn't get him to engage with me i couldn't get get him to give me eye contact over time he started to lose a lot of vocabulary right around 18 months to the age of two years he just slid backwards he would flap like that and he would walk on his tiptoes look at the wall and be talking to the wall he had problems with eye contact he never looked you straight in the eye he had problems with his speech some research and found out about neurogen and the big question that i had in my own mind was what is there to do is and i could not come up with a good answer and i said we have to do it start seeing better eye contact definitely different than his engagement with us with his sibling his mood he's just so much calmer now he's all about taking his own shower i have to just prompt him to get out but he'll wash himself and he'll put his clothes on it's all the pet scan images we just i can't tell you the word we were just so excited and thrilled the areas that were hypoactive or non-active were warm they were there was there was activity there ganesh has gone from the third grade fourth month reading level to a seventh grade first month reading level in five months So that is the amazing story of Ganesh. Severe autism, completely, not just autism is reversed, but he's back to, he's in a normal school, topping the school, getting A plus grades. So that's what's possible. We went to different. Uh, this is a story of, uh, you saw one, one child from America, now we go to Africa. And this is a story of three triplets, all of whom had autism. And let's hear their story. We went to different doctors, we went to different hospitals. And when I brought it up, they were like, oh, no, 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 don't worry. Because they are boys, they are triplets, they were premature. I would be walking out and I'm like, bye. And no child is crying, no child is waving back bye. And by then, for sure, I knew that they should be doing that. Children had this behavior of disappearing. In fact, Eric disappeared a few times in the middle of the night. The biting, the spitting, the scratching. How are we going to stop this behavior? We went to see the neurologist, and in five minutes, he said, these children are autistic. As parents, it was very traumatizing. First of all, we didn't understand what autistic means. So I decided to really get to read a lot about autism. I remember the first time I read about stem cell. I was like, wow, this is really good. We had a lot of questions which we asked and we got very clear answers from Dr. Sharma. The day of the stem cell itself came. Actually, I was a bit anxious, of course, but really I didn't have fear. A bit of apprehension, anxiety, of course, as a mother, but I knew they were good friends. 
we put a needle in this pelvic bone and then we take out the bone marrow which is the fluid inside the bone the pure stem cells once they are ready a thin needle is inserted into the lower back we inject the stem cells into the cerebrospinal fluid it flows all the way up to the brain things that would have taken probably years to be accomplished in my sons in like eight months time we really be able to come very fast you see the bones they used to defecate on their clothes but now they can use the toilet we've seen a lot of improvement in terms of spitting the tax ones have reduced sleeping used to be a problem before but at the moment he's taken to his bed takes a few minutes and he's asleep see my son's cycle you try to make them understand what it is to peg and it is But after stem cell, when we arrived in Kenya, the following day, in the morning, and this day would cycle. Don't send it to buy tomato paste, okay? I'm going to send it to buy what? In the shop. Where is the shop? Here. Okay. So I'm going to give you money for what? think stem cell work and I'm like <laughs> I can feel changes I can touch I can feel I can smell of course for me stem cell work I'll do it until my children get well So that's the amazing improvements, and in fact, uh, this video is uh, a little old. Uh, these children are much, much better now. Um, uh, one of these three is completely off the spectrum; the other two also getting close to getting to be normal. And uh, this is the last video. Of, uh, we saw something from America and Africa. This is a child from India, from Asia. and uh, he was very hyperactive Shantanu was my first child so i was very excited about how he would be but when i came to know that my child has a problem it shocked me and i wondered why did this happen only to me Shantanu's behavior was very different from that of other normal children for example normal children walk on their feet but Shantanu walked on his toes It has been 2 months since Shantanu stem cell therapy there have been many changes and many improvements his hyperactivity has reduced drastically and his attention span has improved a lot he sits patiently in one place he has started coordinating with his sister very well he plays with her very affectionately We are glad we took the decision to give him stem cell therapy. It has been 6 months since the stem cell therapy. Shantanu has shown a lot of improvements. His hyperactivity is almost as good as non-existent. His handwriting has become much better. His eye contact has also become better. I have never seen Shantanu dancing. but now he takes a keen interest in dancing he also likes to listen to music he can now fold clothes earlier he was not able to fold even a handkerchief but now he can easily fold blankets he helps me in cutting vegetable and in cooking too
goes to the market store for purchases. He passed his 10th grade. Very important, he graduated from school. There have been improvements in many other aspects as well. For example, this emotional quotient has also increased. Now he hugs us very affectionately, calls me mother. Now he takes tuitions on other special kids. He takes deaf children. Can you imagine a child who could not talk is today taking tuitions for deaf children, a special needs child after stem cells has improved so much that he's looking after other special needs children. So uh, now having shown you the results, one question in your mind will be, how safe is this treatment? Are there any complications? So here's the good news. There are no major adverse events or complications. You know, we've had no child who is neurologically deteriorated. There are some minor adverse events. We've seen 3% of the patients who have a history of epilepsy may develop epilepsy in the first three months after stem cell. So that's the only significant. It's minor because it's, it's reversible. You treat with medicines and it stops. But it is still a, a matter of concern. 10% of the patients get a spinal headache after, it's called a spinal headache. It's due to the lumbar puncture that we do. Uh, it lasts for two days. It's a peculiar headache which comes only on sitting. It disappears on lying down. Uh, and it happens, if at all it happens, it happens just after the treatment, but it's treatable. Some children may have some nausea, vomiting, uh, pain at the side of the injection, etc. But these are all minor and reversible. So there is no major adverse event there's no risk in doing this treatment. Nothing can possibly go wrong. A child cannot worsen as compared to before the treatment. Uh, now that was about, so we looked at three things. We looked at rehabilitation. Okay, we looked at all types of rehabilitation. We looked at stem cells. And now we are going to look at the last part, which is called integrative therapies. So what exactly are these? So we have a combination of therapies that we use in addition to stem cells and rehab. The first of them is something called hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT. Uh, so uh, what is HBOT? HBOT is actually oxygen. That's 100% oxygen that's given under pressure. Uh, so the mother and child lie down comfortably, or the father and the child lie down comfortably in the chamber. There is a TV. Uh, the child can watch, so they, they, they really enjoy it. Children actually look forward to this. It's like cozy, comfortable, and you know they are, they are with their parents. And uh, what we do is, in this oxygen is given, normally we breathe oxygen at one atmospheric pressure. But here, oxygen is given at a higher pressure. So what, what, what happens that time? Now see, at normal pressure, see our blood has got red blood cells, white blood cells, and it's got a liquid called plasma. Now, normally, as you and I are breathing just now, only our red blood cells, which contain hemoglobin, take the oxygen everywhere. So there is no oxygen in the white blood cells. There is no oxygen in, in the plasma, in the liquid. Only in the red blood cells, they carry oxygen. But when you give it under pressure, then the oxygen goes into the plasma, into the liquid. So the entire blood carries oxygen now. So that's the beauty of hyperbaric oxygen. Normally, only the RBCs, red blood cells, the hemoglobin in the red blood cells carries. But when you give it under pressure, the entire liquid plasma of the blood is full of oxygen. So now oxygen goes to every nook and cranny and corner of the body and all the tissues get fully oxygenated. So the benefits of hyperbaric oxygen are uh, are many, and uh, you know these are just listed. Uh, for example, the, the metabolism improves, oxygenation improves, uh, you know, and uh, so all these all these things are a part of the benefits that we have, uh, along with the improvement in the immunity as well. So uh, this is just a, a list of all the improvements that occur uh, following hyperbaric oxygen. The second therapy we add is ozone therapy. So what is ozone? So oxygen is normally O2. Ozone is O3. So it is, there is one extra oxygen molecule. So it's a super activated oxygen. Uh, and this activated oxygen has a lot of benefits. It kills any form of, it kills viruses, bacteria, fungal, etc. In fact, we 
uh, used. We've got, we, we did a lot of work on ozone in COVID and found it to be very, very beneficial. We published three papers on that. It reduces inflammation and swelling. Uh, it reduces blood clots. It, it has what is called an antioxidant effect. So uh, we basically take 100% uh, medical grade oxygen and we combine it to uh, actually make it into O3. So these are all the effects that they have. And this is how it is given. Uh, you could either sit in a chamber and you know your head comes out, but children are not comfortable with this. So we can make them breathe it. We can give it through the ear. We give it through the rectum for gut cleansing. So uh, uh, it uh, when we give it through the rectum, it cleans the entire gut up inside. Uh, so this has, uh, there are different ways that we can give this. So these are the benefits from killing viruses, detoxifying the body, reducing inflammation, anti-aging, increasing oxygenation, and improving the immune system. Uh, this is just a list of all the scientific benefits of it. Uh, you know, then there is gut cleansing. So there is a relationship between the gut and autism. This is something that we know of. And uh, uh, we, have a diff we have different processes of cleaning the gut from simple enemas to colon hydrotherapy to ozone therapy. And we combine gut cleansing with our old protocol. We believe once the gut is cleansed, a lot of problems will actually minimize or disappear or go away. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is the gut-brain axis and just to let you know the importance of what you see here is the colon hydrotherapy machine that we have. And uh, this this is uh, very, very useful for cleaning the entire large intestine. Then we have uh, acupressure or deep tissue mobilization. Uh, the, you know, So here, uh, points are given at specific locations and this helps in different ways. It helps improve sleep, it helps improve behavioral issues. A lot of benefits come from acupressure. And uh, so that there are different ways in which it works. Now, uh, we also believe in uh, intravenous vitamin therapy because we find that very often uh, some of the vitamins are reduced in the body, uh, vitamin C, B complex, uh, vitamin D, etc. Then there are a whole lot of micronutrients called magnesium, calcium, zinc, selenium, etc. So all these uh, chemicals, depending on what is, so everybody doesn't get all of this. We do blood evaluations and see what is deficient. And we only treat the deficiencies. So if you have normal levels of vitamin D, then there is no logic or rationale to give you vitamin D. But if you have reduced levels of vitamin C, then we will give you vitamin C. So uh, you know the benefits of integrative therapy are huge. There's a whole list of benefits. Uh, this is our institute, uh, the Museum Brain and Spine Institute. It's in Navi Mumbai. It's been set up for one purpose only to help children with neurological dis disorders to help improve in their quality of life and reverse their deficits. Uh, we have treated over 12,000 patients from all the six continents of the planet from over 70 countries. And uh, our core team, apart from myself, Dr. Nandini and Dr. Prerna are our stem cell experts. Dr. Jacob is India's senior most neuro rehabilitation specialist. We honor that he works with us. He's one of the founder members. And Dr. Himangi is an MD physician from the United States who, when she was in the United States, she had done an MD there and she was working there. She developed a disease called ALS or motor neuron disease. In America, everybody told her she's got only a few more months to survive, but she didn't give up. She came to India. I treated her. Uh, that was 12 years ago. Uh, not only is she well, but she's improved so much that she works with us as head of her research. So that's the magic and power of stem cells. Uh, so we believe in quality control. So we have several accreditations such as good laboratory practice, good manufacturing practice, ISO, etc. We are also uh, certified by the European Medical Association, the EMA, uh, as uh, the you know it is. Uh, we are certified for best medical practice from the European Medical Association. Uh, we have written a total of sixteen books. Uh, we have received awards such as the prestigious Rose of Paracelsus Award from uh, the Socrates Nomination Committee of Oxford, UK, uh, the European Award for Best Practices, uh, you know, from the European Society for Quality Control in Brussels, uh, the Best Stem Cell Therapy Center in India in 2016 at the National Healthcare Excellence Awards, 
the once again in 2018 uh, best institute for stem cells and research in india this is being given to us by uh, the health minister of india uh, now to help you to make your decision you, know, you we re request that you visit our website that's www.neurogenbsi bsi is brain and spine institute.com or you could email us at contact at the rate news in bsi.com. The response time is less than 30 minutes. Uh, when you email to us, a doctor replies to you, not somebody from the administration. A doctor will reply to you. You can WhatsApp chat, audio, video call. You could just call us at a number or you can we can set up a Skype interview with a prior appointment. Or once you've decided, we appoint a specific coordinator who becomes your one point of contact for everything and will guide you through the whole process till you arrive at Neurogen. <clears throat> During your stay, you arrive on a Sunday. Uh, Monday, we all the evaluations happen. On Tuesday, we do the stem cell therapy. Wednesday to Saturday is a detailed rehab program. And uh, Saturday, you're discharged. But now we have a two week option as well where you can stay for another week just for rehab and uh, hyperbaric oxygen, etc. So, my conclusion is that adult stem cell therapy is a safe and effective. Notice I've put safe before effective. It's a safe and effective treatment option for autism, cerebral palsy, and for all those other pediatric and adult neurological disorders that cause paralysis, for which currently there is no other treatment option. Uh, we, saw the prime, we saw the Prime Minister of India talk about stem cells in Parliament. Now let's hear the President of the United States uh, talk about stem cells. Scientists believe these tiny cells may have the potential to help us understand and possibly cure some of our most devastating diseases and conditions, to regenerate the severed spinal cord and lift someone from a wheelchair, to spur insulin production and spare a child from a lifetime of needles, to treat Parkinson's, cancer, heart disease, and others that affect millions of Americans and the people who love them. Today, with the executive order I am about to sign, we will bring the change that so many scientists and researchers doctors and innovators, patients and loved ones have hoped for and fought for these past eight years. We will lift the ban on federal funding for promising embryonic stem cell research. There's no finish line in the work of science. The race is always with us. The urgent urgent work of giving substance to hope and answering both many bedside prayers of seeking a day when words like terminal and incurable are potentially retired from our vocabulary. Uh, so I showed you this to show you that the world's two biggest democracies are India and the United States. You heard the Prime Minister of India talk in Parliament about stem cells. And now you heard the President of the United States talk about stem cells. So when uh, presidents and prime ministers talk about a treatment, there must be something of public importance about the treatment or they won't talk about any one specific treatment. So uh, with this, uh, I come to an end to my talk. I am open to any questions. Any of you who have questions, you can please uh, uh, enter them and I will be happy to answer all your questions. Uh, so Hafsa, Natasha, Iram says, can I ask about genetic disorders? These, yes, uh, Hafsa, you can ask me about uh, genetic disorders. Uh, so uh, it depends on what the genetic disorder is. Uh, uh, our stem cell does not correct the genetic disorder. It repairs the damage caused to the brain by the genetic disorder. So the genetic disorder causes damage. We fix the damage. Okay. And so we are treating the damage and not the cause, which is the genetic disorder. Uh, then uh, SS Singh says, I'm a paraplegic person seeking your suggestion, my treatment. Please guide and give me an MRI report on what is the cost of treatment. Uh, uh, Mr. Singh, uh, what you can do is you can email us your reports. And uh, we will look into it. We have treated several paraplegics. Uh, we have wonderful results in spinal cord injury. We make everybody stand up. We make people walk. 
uh, we have a special spinal cord injury walking track. We have a huge, big spinal cord injury walking track. Look at the name. Spinal cord injury walking track. So when you come to us, everybody has to walk. We make everybody walk. So we, we try our best to help you get out of the wheelchair and make you walk. Uh, so yes, we can treat. So, uh, Mr. Sham, okay. Mr. Sham, I think if you just, we, we, we can treat you. We can treat you. Uh, but you need to just send us uh, all the information. We need to see the films, the MRI films and reports. But looking at what you've said, uh, Mr. Singh, we can definitely help you. Mr. Vagam says, I live in the UK. What are the costs of the treatment? Uh, Mr. Vagam, I, uh, in a webinar, normally we don't discuss anything commercial. We do not discuss costs and stuff like that. Uh, it's a medical presentation. So but what you can do is you can, but, but I do understand that cost is a major concern. It's a very major concern. So, uh, you know, the email I, I, I mentioned uh, uh, there, that is contact at the rate news in BSI.com. Please send us an email. Otherwise, send us a WhatsApp on our number and we will tell you everything. We'll tell you everything that uh, you need to know, including about cost. Tabila says, hi, doctor. Hi, Tabila. Uh, how about if the treatment fails and we can't see improvement? So uh, we have a 90% success rate. That means 10% of our uh, patients do not improve. Um, and there can be multiple reasons for it. Now, one of the main reasons we've seen is if parents don't do proper rehabilitation after the stem cell, then you may not see the results. Why? If the brain is like a computer, a computer's got hardware and a computer's got software. Now, stem cell therapy only fixes the hardware. Stem cell therapy does not and cannot put software. The software comes from rehab. So the, if you haven't done enough rehab, you will not see as many improvements. Yeah, so Nafsa says, is it not for improvement of her disabilities? Yes, Nafsa, it is for improvement of her disabilities. But what I'm trying to say, the disabilities will improve. I repeat, the disabilities will improve. But stem cell therapy cannot connect the genetic problem. It will only improve, uh, you know, her disabilities, like you question. Vagan says, thanks, I'm excited for my 12-year-old son. Great, Vagan, look forward to seeing you here. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, Nafsa says, just rail for autism children. No, Nafsa, I, because today is World Autism Day, so I restricted my talk to autism. But it works for cerebral palsy, it works for Down syndrome, uh, it works for intellectual disability in adults. It works for paralysis due to any cause, such as spinal cord injury, stroke, ALS, etc. So today's talk is on autism because World Autism Day. Otherwise, it works for others. Does fruit stem cell product work? No, my dear Ruth. Uh, uh, this uh, fruit stem cells has absolutely zero role because uh, you know stem cells are, are living cells, and uh, you know when these fruit stem cells are packaged and sold. I'm not sure of what benefits. So I do not recommend food stem cells. Ruth Kara says, do I have to travel to India for treatment? Do we have branches in each country? Well, Ruth, at this point, you have to travel to India. Uh, we are planning by this year and hopefully to have a center in the Bahamas. Uh, this is for patients from America who will find it easier to come and go. But we don't know what the timeline on that is. So Presently, you have to come to Mumbai only. There is no other option. Uh, Shalom Epidigole. After the correction, do the, do the transplant the cells the same day? Yes, yes, yes. We do transplant on the... Shalom is asking if the transplant is done on the same day as uh, the collection. Uh, 
Yes, it is done on the same day. I can't see any more questions. Uh, uh, Anonymous suddenly says, is there a TPA facility? Yes, we have. Uh, we have tie-ups with certain insurance companies, not all. And if you write to us, we will see uh, what insurance you have and if we have a, a tie-up with the TPA. But we do have tie-ups. Now, Nidhi Atri asks, is there any data on stem cells with and without therapy we have? No, we don't. We believe that stem cells work with rehab. So it would not be correct to just give patients stem cells and not give them rehab. Uh, so we don't have data on this as yet. I, I believe it's a combination. I, I don't think it is ethical that somebody who can benefit from the treatment, we don't give it uh, only for for these for you know for other reasons. Yes, so we have TPA facility. Sham, I've seen your reports. I think we can definitely help you. So uh, I don't see any more questions. The time is also up. It's six o'clock. I want to thank you all for your attention. Um, I wish you a lovely evening or a lovely day ahead. Uh, today is a very auspicious day in India. It is the start of, uh, uh, in Investor India, it's the beginning of the new year here. Uh, uh, and uh, it's the start of spring. Uh, it's supposed to be a very, very auspicious day today. And uh, World Autism Awareness Day happens to have come on the 2nd of April. So uh, I want to wish you all the best. Uh, new beginnings to everyone. God bless you. God bless all our children. And we hope they recover from whatever they're going through right now and get back to living independent, productive, happy, and uh, good lives. Thank you, everybody, for your attention. I will. Uh, I will be discontinuing now. Thank you so much. Uh, those of you who have any more questions, feel free to email us, WhatsApp us. Uh, you can have uh, a direct video, one is to one uh, video consultation with me. It's without any cost. Um, you have to contact uh, uh, any of our people here on email or uh, WhatsApp. And we can do a one is to one video consultation where we can discuss your children individually. Um, and it's done without any cost. So once again, thank you for participating in this webinar and have a great day ahead. Thank you.